hi everyone. My name is Andrew Hatchwick, and I'm managing director of Korean App. And Korean App is an online web portal that gives career advice to students and career guidance to graduates. And we do that by uh, providing real life, real jobs on the website, written by people doing those jobs to try and tell you how you can get into that job, what it's going to be like every day, how much you earn, and the type of things that, we can, that you can do to get in the door, in the door of those jobs. Um, and we do that for two reasons, because people don't find out this kind of information until they're working in the job, and then they realise that they don't like staring at Excel for eight hours a day, or you know, they don't like working with large teams or people. And the second reason we do that is for um, uh, a lot of times jobs will not have a clear path of how to get into them. So you know, a lot of the say consulting jobs need that specific path and you need to know someone to actually get into this kind of job. Um, so this is the first part of Korea. The second part is Korea features a whole section on life skills. It's finding a job, finding a career is not just about Getting a, getting a degree, getting some marks and going into a job. It's about creating something that you're proud of um, and then and, and standing up and saying, no, I'm a doctor or I'm a child or a girl. It's about um, it's about a whole package. So that's Korea. Um, now, whether international students are employable, I have to say definitely yes. Um, and in some instances, I found that they're more employable simply because they've got a second language. Uh, so I used to work in finance, and I worked with someone who could speak uh, Greek, uh, French, and English, and I couldn't tell which was his first language. And it was, it was amazing, and it made me more employable. And, um, the one thing that we keep hearing is, I've done my degree, I've done my study, I can't get a job, I've been going to interview up and I can't get it. And just like Jensen said, it's not just about a degree. Now, that's just your the ticket to the game. That's just get, that's just allows you to kind of play. Yeah. Can you hear me? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Like I said, getting a degree is just the start. It's, it allows you to come up and play and start applying for jobs. Before you get that, you're not allowed to. It's like some job, you can't become an accountant without saying that. So we get a lot of people coming to us saying, I've done my degree, I've got excellent marks, why can't I find a job? And so, well, you know, it's more than just that. Um, but it's important to realise this as well, because as you journey, as you go through looking for jobs, if you have this realisation that that's just the start, that's where you've got to start to continue, that's what you, the first thing you have to do before you go and get a job. It changes your mindset about how to approach things, and it's really important that you change the way you think about going about getting a job. So that's the first one. Um, what employees are looking for is, is not just marks. So, you know, the, the one thing that they're looking for is self-confidence. So, it's, it's a very soft skill, and I mean, how many people here, to put their hand up, can genuinely say that they're self-confident when they go to an interview, they can say, stand in front of an interview panel, feel confident about who they are, you know, what they stand for, and genuinely can chat without feeling nervous, or chat without feeling inhibited, or anything like that. And so I was laughing down here, and I, I know it's funny, and people don't usually think about this kind of stuff, and it hurts their job chances. You know, every single fantastic job um, that I've heard people get, they get consulting jobs, they get other jobs, it's usually because after a while they get to a point where they don't care anymore and then their real self comes through and they finally make a breakthrough. So, you know, self-confidence um, is extremely important. I can't stress that. Um, the second thing, is passion and enthusiasm for what you're doing. So that's another thing we get with career nav is it gives you the ability to find out what you really want to do and what really pushes your buttons and drives you. 
So, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people that say, I'm in accounting uh, or I'm in finance. I hate it. You know, I hate it every day. They pay me lots of money, but I, I don't like it at all. And if you can show that, you know, if you turn up to an interview and you go, I love accounting, or I love, what was it, law? I love reading through law textbooks and I, uh, with a genuine enthusiasm. It's a real difference because people can't, 99% of people don't have that kind of knowledge before they go and looking at jobs. Um, it's so important and it makes such a difference because the interviewers will perceive that and that's what they're looking for. Um, the next part, so the softer skills again, that's what I'm all about. I, the soft skills make the difference between getting a job and not getting a job. Everyone's in the same room, like Jensen said, everyone has a degree, they're all doing the same things to try and get a job. You know, how are you making yourself different? Um, presentation is important. You know, how, you, how you present yourself makes a difference. It's the little things that add up to a big difference. And we have a lot of people come through again saying, you know, what am I doing wrong? And simple things like you think having a nice tie, is it correctly done? The correct, appropriate, not enough, um, not too much makeup, not going overboard, um, clean shoes. Simple, simple things that people look for um, and they would judge you on. And all of these small things, again, add up to make a difference. Um, practicing your CV. So you, you spend all this time to write your CV. Okay, I just, okay, again. You spend all of this time to write your CV, and I've been in interviews, I've interviewed people that I've questioned them on their CV, and they couldn't answer things on their CV. So it's, it's tightening the screws, it's, it's making sure you've crossed all the dots, practicing your CV, get, get with some friends, make it fun to go through your CV. You can point out parts of your, of your friend's CV, you say, you know what, you didn't really answer this. I, I couldn't get up. I, I didn't understand what you were trying to get across here. Um, practicing, you know, being able to come in confidently and talk about yourself and your experiences is important. And not being able to say, well, um, oh, I worked at, I did reception at this place and it was really good. You, go, you know exactly what you're saying. You can meet confidently. You can talk to people and maintain eye contact. And those kind of things are very important when you're looking for a job and you're going through interview after interview because it's the differences that count. It's the small things. That count. And again, knowing yourself, um, I'm going to say this over and over again. People that have a real good understanding of what makes them tick, what their strengths, what their weaknesses are, will come across in a different manner to people interviewing. So, if you have total certainty about who you are and what makes you tick, it, it, it'll make things go a lot more smoothly. Your interview will, will it'll give you that little bit extra edge and you'll be better for it. Um, and, I mean, the interview process is all about making a, um, a relationship between you and the interviewer. It's about forming a bond in two minutes. So, you've got two minutes to form a connection with this person before they make up their mind about you. Okay? So how are you going to, what can you do to make those two minutes count? Um, because after the two minutes, it doesn't matter how much you answer um, the questions, how well you perform the rest of the interview, their perception, their connection has already been made within that first two minutes and that's the most vital part of the interview. And like Jensen pointed out, and I really liked it that he, that he talked about it, because not many people do, because they don't like to discuss this kind of stuff, is your environment. You know, having, um, if you, all you do is study and play video games, and then you go to an interview and they go, tell me about yourself, and you go, well, I study and I play Dota a lot. <laughs> or all I do is play video games. Explore your environment. Your environment is what makes you know, what's, what makes you who you are. And that, it's how you think, and it, it's how you're, it's basically everything that you are is based off your environment. 
broadening your environment will make you more interesting. It will make you more employable. It will make you, you know, getting involved with the Australian culture, knowing about football, knowing when the grand final is. These are things that you can use to make a connection with your interviewer. And it's all about making a connection and a, and, a, and a relationship with that interviewer as fast as you can. So they can understand who you are and how good you are and how good your grades are. Grades aren't important. It's about relationships and connections. Um, and the hobbies as well. The hobbies are seriously important because it gives you something that you can enthusiastically talk about straight off the bat. <coughs> you know, get some hobbies, go out and, and explore and do as much as you can. If you can talk about something, they go, tell me about yourself, and you go, well, I love long distance running, I'm an athlete, I'm, I'm a, I, I love ultra marathons, and it just starts the conversation. It can be an icebreaker, it can lower your sense of nerves. You know, a lot of people we talk to, they go, I just, I feel like I can do really well, but I clam up. I just see it, and I don't know what to do. And, you know, get some hobbies, talk about your hobbies. Get some enthusiasm into what you're saying, and that'll come across. That's what they're looking for. And, I mean, um, the only other thing is, if you keep trying to do the same things over and over, you know, what's the definition of insanity? doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result. You know, if, you, if you've gone for six months trying to get a job and you've had no luck, what can you do differently to try and, and you know, change things up again? You can go, grab a friend, grab a friend, tape a, get him to hold a, a camera and interview you and then you can see what you yourself look like when you're interviewed. If you get intimidated, find someone intimidating get them to interview you until you're not intimidated anymore. You know, it's all about experience. And it's all about experience and persistence because, you know, um, finding a career is all about probabilities. Some things you do, you know, a whole bunch of things you do will gradually increase your, the odds of you getting a job and some things you don't do will gradually decrease your odds of getting a job. And it's all about doing as, many, as much as you possibly can to raise the odds in your favour. And nothing will guarantee you a job. I cannot say one thing that will 100% guarantee you a job, except to do whatever you can and persistence. Every single person that I've talked to and every single person that's come through Career Nav that talked to me have eventually got a job. It's all about persistence and getting up after, you know, after your 60th time of getting knocked back from someone, continuing on with the same enthusiasm and encouragement that you can. Because the next one might be the one. You've had 60 failures, but the next one is the one. 